With all the electric glitz and glam going on right now, it's nice to know that this old school SRM 225 string trimmer by Echo can still pack a punch on the playground and put batteries back in their slots. Let's see what this Echo SRM 225 is all about. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And before we get trimming, if you're feeling the vibe and you want to be part of the tribe, subscribe. First, let's talk about what's going on here. Echo, been around for nearly 70 years, cranking out the first chainsaw back in 1963. A majority of Echo products are made right here in the US with foreign and domestic parts. Today, they make everything from chainsaws to blowers to trimmers. And in the last several years, they've been the boss of battery equipment. But one item in their lineup has been a staple, not only on the racks at Home Depot, but on the racks of trailers of landscape professionals as well and that is the SRM 225 Echo String Trimmer. I'm gonna get this out of the way now. I'm a fan of all tools, but I am an Echo fan for sure. I like the cut of their trimmers, the power of their blowers, and their overall build quality. When I had my landscaping business, I used an Echo Trimmer, and my dad still has that same trimmer today, 20 years later. And when I bought my house 10 years ago, I immediately went out and bought one. And this one here is brand new, and it's going to my father-in-law. Starting up here at the top, this trimmer has a 21.2 cc professional grade two-stroke engine. That's plenty of power to slice through the thickest of grass. And when you pull on the throttle here, this engine doesn't vibrate like crazy like some cheaper models do. Fun fact, Echo produced the first anti-vibration chainsaw back in 1965. If you run these on 50 to 1 two-cycle ethanol-free gas mix, these engines will start right up for you and give you no trouble at all. Mine being 10 years old now could benefit from some new fuel lines, but those do tend to dry out over time. Not to worry though, they're super easy to change out. For a two-cycle, this engine starts up beautifully. The new ones with their i30 startup system reduce starting efforts by 30%. To get some cheaper trimmers to start, you have to choke them, prime them six to seven times, pull them eight to 10 times, lower the choke, pull them three to five more times, sell your firstborn, and then after several prayers, it should start. We're gonna start up this Echo for the first time. We're gonna fill her up. First step, switch is on. Choke goes up. Now the instructions say to prime this seven to eight times, but usually when I run this machine, I only have to prime it about three times, even on a cold start. We'll give this some primes. <laughs> Hold down on our handle, give it some pulls. You heard it burp. We're gonna put the choke at about half. Push the choke down. She's up and running. Just so you know, these machines do like to grow legs and walk a little bit. That's running nice and smooth and you notice it's not that loud. Rev it up. Runs great. And what's really nice is these machines start up the same way every time. Whereas some machines you may choke it and then prime it a bunch of times and give it this many pulls and then the next time this many pulls, this one is very consistent. Time out. If you appreciate honest reviews like this, would you mind taking a super quick second to smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm? Thanks. It comes with a nice big see-through gas tank so you can see exactly how much fuel you're working with. These are very fuel efficient. I only fill mine up about every three to four uses. And even then, there's still gas in the tank. So if you're worried about gas prices, don't be. You're not using a lot here. It has a durable protective base here on the bottom. So if you drop this thing, you're not gonna bust up your gas tank. Wires and cables are all protected down to your throttle control. This throttle control handle has a nice anti-slip grip. Here's your on off switch. Here's your safety trigger and your throttle down below. Nothing complex here. Further down, you have an adjustable padded handle. This is a lot nicer to hold than those hard plastic ones that you see on cheap trimmers. And when you're holding this guy in your hands, it actually feels incredibly well balanced. It only weighs about 11 and a half pounds, so you're not gonna be fatigued when you're carting this around a large yard. Some of the cheaper models are actually engine heavy. So what does that mean? Well, it means you're gonna use more of your forearm and your bicep to support it, maybe even a little bit of your shoulder. And if you're doing that over and over repetitively for long periods of time, that's really gonna exhaust your upper body. This is a 59 inch long smooth shaft. A flex cable drive. If you are a shorter person, you may elect to go with their curved shaft model. Personally, I'm not a fan of those because you can whip yourself accidentally in the ankles if you hold it wrong. But hey. It's all a matter of preference. At the bottom, you have a durable debris shield and inside you'll find a line cutoff knife. Tell me down below in the comments, are you a shield on or a shield off kind of person? When I had my landscaping business back in the day, I had a trimmer that didn't have one and I was constantly getting hit in the face with debris. So I leave it on. By the way, here's your friendly reminder. 
to wear some eye protection. The Speedfeed 400 trimmer head swings out a 17 inch cutting swath. Cheaper models out there will usually have a 13 to 15 inch cutting swath. This means you're cutting more with less effort. These Speedfeed heads are super easy to reload. You don't even need to take them apart. Once you're out of line, what you're gonna do is spin your head so that way you can line up your holes and see light all the way through. Then you're gonna take your line, feed it through all the way, and once the line is centered where you want it, all you gotta do is simply twist this top knob and it'll wind the line right in. Super convenient and works like a charm. If you need more line, you simply bump it and it'll kick out about an extra inch on each side. I also wanted to show you this. This is the Echo Crossfire .095 cutting line. This is a brand new case. I bought this 10 years ago and I still have some. This stuff really lasts. One thing I like to check here on a new trimmer is the spark plug. I wanna make sure that it's gapped correctly. So we're gonna remove the plug cover. This here is a spark plug wrench. These units used to come with one of these. This one didn't. Bruh. I don't know what the deal is, Echo, but having one of these around is definitely handy. So we're gonna slip it on. <clears throat> there we go. Spark plug is out. We're gonna check the gap here. On this trimmer, the spark plug should be gapped at 0 0.025, and we are dead on. Look at that. We're gonna reinstall that bad boy, and we are good to go. Boots back on, all set. The Echo SRM 225 string trimmer is a durable, dependable, lightweight, easy starting, powerful trimmer that makes many homeowners and landscape professionals happy. And with over 7,000 reviews on the Home Depot website, it pulls a 4.6 out of 5 stars. That's really impressive. These trimmers come with a 5 year consumer warranty and a 2 year commercial warranty. A serious value for serious homeowners and landscape professionals. What's interesting as well is their resale value down the road is really good. I see these power pop up on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace from time to time for a pretty penny. I would like to give their battery lineup a shot and you just may see some videos coming up on those in the future. About two thirds of all the landscape professionals that mow in my neighborhood have these Echo string trimmers on their trailers or other Echo models. I have yet to see one landscaping company with a battery powered trimmer though. Hmm, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna put my trust in what the pros are using. Don't forget to give me one of these and be sure to check out more cool Garage Gear videos right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.